Father, we thank you so much for the ministry of Christian Service Brigade and what it's meant in our lives uh, over the years. And Lord, what it will continue to mean for us in the future. Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding as we work with all of the men and boys who are being influenced by Brigade. And Lord, thank you so much for the privilege of being part of this uh, campfire tonight. We pray that uh, people be touched and ministered to in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Ed, and welcome everyone to the council ring. We have a great evening planned uh, this evening, and uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. I normally do the uh, trivia, but someone here is on tonight that regularly attends, Ron Wren, that's much more familiar with this particular brigade trivia than me. So uh, we're going to have some brigade trivia around the frontiersmen, and most of you are familiar uh, with that term, uh, men early on. In fact, next a month from now, we're going to, to give you a little preview, we're going to focus even more on that, uh, the history of that. But we're just going to do a few quick uh, trivia uh, questions, who the frontiersmen are and how do how well do we know them and their role in the CSB history. So uh, I believe Ron is going to be asking the questions and uh, Keith is going to be putting the questions, uh, survey questions up. Okay, the way this works is the questions will appear on your screen. It's a multiple choice and you click the one you think is the right answer. And then when we'll give you a couple minutes or a minute or so to get your answer up, and then you have to click to send it in, and we'll count up the results. So the first question, there it is. The primary purpose of the Brigade Frontiersman was? A is to get new brigade groups started in the Western states. B, to work with this, a CSB board member to earn college scholarship. C, to start brigade camps, mainly in the Eastern states. Or D, to travel to churches near Chicago as a gospel team with Joe Coughlin. Pick one and then click on submit. There's a little circle that you need to click on right in front of the answer you think is correct. Okay, everybody submitted. Okay. Wow. Most of you selected to travel to churches near Chicago as a gospel team. That is only very minimally true. The right answer is C, to start brigade camps mainly in the Eastern states. Hmm. Woohoo! Wow. Second question How many of the current U.S. <laughs> brigade camps? Did the frontiersmen help start? A, put the question up. How many of the current US brigade camps did the frontiersmen help start? Three or four? B, five or six? C, seven or eight? D, nine or 10? Most of you will be familiar with your local brigade camp. You may or may not know how many others there are. So you may have to kind of guess how many did they help start. Joel, you'd say if they're all in there, they're, they're yeah, the answer? They're, they're, uh, they're 16 out of 18, but go, uh, go ahead. They've had enough time. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't vote. So I would be, you're never going to get 100%. The, the correct answer is C, seven or eight. Hmm. 
most people would say seven, some people might say eight. Only 13% got that right. Hmm. They were involved in the early days of most of the brigade camps in the East. Cascatoa in Michigan, Stony Glen in Ohio, Haycock in Pennsylvania, Hickory Hill in Western New York, Northern Frontier in Eastern New York, New England Frontier in Maine, and Nathaniel in Minnesota. Hmm. That's seven. Over the course of six or seven years, they started or had number, uh, uh, maybe as many as a dozen other camps, but none of them were able to continue. Next question, question number three. Many of you will get this right. Which two of the frontiersmen later served on brigade staff? A, Doug Criscow and Jim Adair. B, Bill Brown and Chuck Starr. C, Elgin Green and Bruce Baker. D, Lee Troop and Sam Gray. Click on what you think is the correct answer. Most people will get this right. Yep. I hope. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. Yep. Uh, I think everybody's voted. Ron. All right. That's right. The sounding 88% got it correct. Mm. Lee Troop, longtime brigade staff person in the 50s and 60s, and Sam Gray was on staff on the 50s into 1990, mostly as president. Mm -hmm. Over what span of years did a frontiersman team exist? 1940 to 1947? 1942 to 49, 1944 to 1953. If you know when your brigade camp started, that might help. I'm gonna try to If you're from Canada, you just would know it anyway. The correct answer is C, 1944 mm. to 1950. 50, that's right. Mm. Well, and the last question, what type of uniforms did the frontiersmen wear? The original Forest Green Brigade uniform, B, the red and black buffalo plaid wool shirt and blue jeans, C, an army green t-shirt with khaki pants, D, whatever was comfortable as long as he carried his Bible. No, no trick questions here at all. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, how are we doing? It's gonna say you could tune in. Uh, I think everybody has voted is voted. Okay. Tune and the correct Buffalo answer Buffalo. is the red and black Buffalo plaid wool t-shirt, wool, wool shirt and blue <laughs> jeans is the correct answer, B. Wow. Got a lot of votes for the other ones, but yes. that one had the most. Well, thanks so much, Ron. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to now turn it over uh, to Christian, who's going to tell us a little bit more about uh, the upcoming Peddling for a Purpose. Hi, everyone. My name is Christian Rosado, and I work in the National Office, in case you don't know me. Um, and we are in full force, really excited about our annual bike-a-thon. 
I see some faces that have already participated in our bikeathon over the years, which is really fun to say over the years because we started it three years ago. Um, so we have our new shirt for this year and everything is moving and grooving. We have our sponsors, we have people registering. Thank you for some of you guys that have already registered. Um, there are so many ways that you can participate. You uh, can join a team, you can sponsor a rider, you can start your own team, you can just ride by yourself. Um, there's no limits, there's no rules. We just ask that you ride for the whole month of May, not for the whole month of May, sorry. You can ride for the whole month of May. <laughs> Actually, Ed Moynier is one of our alum and he rode and Harold did this too for the whole month. They rode, you know, a certain amount of miles each day and then tallied up all their miles. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Um, John Hoffman, actually, they rode for the whole month of May as well. You can just pick one day. You can ride with your family. Um, it's very flexible. So we really, really want you guys to join us and to give you a little bit of incentive today because you're here. If you sign up today as an alum, I will just send you the free t-shirt. You don't have to raise the $30. It's not a registration fee. It's just like a donation. Um, you do not have to raise that and I will send you the t-shirt, but you have to sign up today and you have to be an alum on this page. Okay. <laughs> this is only for my special guys. This so is how do you sign up, Christian? I'm going to put the um, email or the website. Thank you, Arden. I'm going to put the website in the chat where you guys will just click on it and then you can register. It's pretty easy. If you have any trouble, then you can contact me and tomorrow we'll get you, we'll get you squared away and I'll send out your t-shirt. We should have them by next week. So we're really excited about it. And we're just, we want you guys to join us and uh, raise awareness for Christian service for gay. You guys love it just as much as we do. So let's do this. Thanks, Joel. Thank you for your time, guys. Thanks, Christian. We're going to now turn it over to Jay and he's going to lead our uh, reminisce time. And it's going to be around the theme of discipleship through achievement. Was that your experience? So I know I'm looking here and I see several Herald of Christ. So obviously in your unit, uh, you know, you can share somewhat about that. Uh, some, some units, they had great discipleship, but they didn't use the achievement. And some units, sadly, you know, um, didn't give a lot of grounding, you know, in discipleship. So um, Jay's going to lead this uh, discussion over the next 20, 25 minutes. So take it away, Jay. All right. Thank you. Hey, uh, I think it's important that it, you don't have to just ride miles. You can also ride kilometers for the pedaling for a purpose as well. So for our Canadian friends up north, uh, you are more than welcome to participate in this too. So, anyway, um, hey, achievement, right? It has been part of the program. It's been part of the process. And we want to hear from you uh, with regard to uh, your involvement with different achievements, different experiences, different stories that may come out from uh, this time. What, If you would like to share a story about your achievement process, how far along that you have gone, um, I know I had the chance today uh, to hear from one of our individuals um, about how far he made it in the achievement process, um, and I'm sure he uh, he'll share that story later on, but if you would like to share, uh, I would encourage you to either raise your physical hand or raise a digital hand by going down and uh, clicking on the reactions tab and hitting raising your hand down there. So if anybody would like to get us started, um, I certainly am looking over the screen right now and would love to hear from you if you have a story about your achievements. Uh, through the brigade process. Anybody want to go first? All right, Harold, I see your physical hand up. So Harold Brown, who I had the chance to meet in Detroit at Iron Sharpens Iron. Um, Harold, we'll have you get us started. You can go ahead and unmute yourself and share your story of achievement. The group I belonged to for more than 50 years had 12 young men my first, uh, uh, who became Heralds of Christ. My first exposure to the Herald was 
in October of 1966. And one, um, they were having this ceremony at, a, at a, the evening church service. And one of the young men that was there, his name was John. And uh, he was, a, at the time, he was 17 years of age. And John went on, he, he, compl he was the first one to be presented with this Herald of Christ. And I thought, okay, this is a pretty neat kind of minister. I need to get involved with this. And over the years, I had the privilege of working with, uh, well, with five or six guys, including two of my sons who completed their Herald of Christ uh, in their last year of high school. And what a privilege it was as a dad to be able to work with a son for that last year while he was under our guidance and, and care. And at the end of that, have the opportunity of, of seeing him receive the Herald of Christ. Subsequent to that, I, uh, in, in Canada, we were concerned. We, we have a, had a belief at that time that if we believed in discipleship for young men, we need to have a, a program that is discipleship for our leaders. And so Wayne Peterson and I put together a Herald of Christ for Men. And about a dozen men, including American guys and a few Canadian guys, completed that program over the years. Last Thursday, six days ago, uh, I had a, another special privilege bit of background, as uh, uh, about 20 years ago, I got a request from a pastor asking if Christian Service Brigade had anything that would uh, a church could present to one of their faithful leaders who had lead, led their ministry for a number of years. I said, well, the only thing we have is a, a a silver, a silver ring, but that didn't seem to be sufficient. So we came up with the idea of an honorary herald of Christ. And I had the privilege of presenting that to a, a man who passed away shortly after that. He was a true herald of Christ. He never had more than six or eight guys in his battalion. But out of that group, far over the years, five of those men, or five of those boys, became pastors in his denomination. Well, last Thursday, I had a special privilege uh, uh, to participate in a presentation of two more honorary heralds of Christ down uh, just outside of Niagara Falls. These two men had been, one had been serving the Lord for since 1980, and the other ones since 1986, and they had, uh, and we we, get, we gathered at a restaurant uh, near, near their near their church, and made and Ron and Ron Carnahan and I made a had a present made a presentation to these two brothers in to these two brothers in Christ. And the exciting part was that those four men, those two men. They, there were th five other guy, five guys there in total, and they had those two men had sort of stepped aside. But uh, we don't we are brigade doesn't have a, a retirement program, and those and there's now three men leading their stockade program, and and they said that they hoped in, in 25 years or so they could become a herald of Christ. So that was, that's just a little, little testimony of my association with the herald of Christ. Awesome, Harold. Well, thank you very much for uh, giving us some of those highlights and those connections with uh, different herald of Christ moments uh, that you were involved in and that you saw. I love hearing those stories and nice to see you back on your feet. And thanks for coming out to the Iron Sharpens Iron uh, out in Detroit, uh, seeing you out there. Uh, By the way, just one other little little point that that fellow that got the first Herald quick, of yep. Christ, he ended up as our 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 deputy prime minister uh, a number of years ago. His name was John Manley. 
And he that? was identified by the press as Mr. Clean. <laughs> there we go. How about that? Awesome. Harold, thank you very much. Um, so if you have a story that relates to achievement, would love to hear from you. Uh, Harold has gotten us started and we appreciate Harold's kind words and, and, and stories. If you would like to raise your physical hand or raise your digital hand under the reactions tab, uh, if you're using a computer, I would encourage you to uh, go ahead. Tom, I believe, had his hand up that somebody just sent me a message uh, indicating and I'm looking around for Tom. Tom, Tom, yes, go ahead. You were clapping earlier. Okay. Uh, but Tom, go ahead, share your story. You can unmute yourself and go for it. Yeah. So our brigade program was built around achievement. Um, I mean, it was not optional. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of funny what Joel just said that some uh, groups didn't do that. Now, of course, we're talking 1960 uh, when we did it. But um, Many of you have heard my uh, testimony that uh, I became a Christian through uh, the Ministry of uh, Brigade, and uh, our leaders, uh, a business, two businessmen, and our pastor really discipled me through it um, and encouraged me to do the achievements. And um, you know, by God's grace, I became a herald uh, when I was sixteen. Um, only by their encouragement and uh, their support because this whole Christian thing was totally new to me. Um, I couldn't even spell it probably, but um, they walked beside me and, and certainly encouraged me. And when I needed counsel, it was uh, very helpful. And through those experiences, I got involved in Northwoods and uh, met uh, some of the brigade staff who were also very encouraging, and actually Lee Trout was the uh, brigademan that uh, did my Herald of Christ interview, <coughs> as well as Lowell Martin. But uh, these guys just really encouraged me, and as I went through the achievements, obviously my life changed uh, as I got to know the Lord uh, better and better. And, and as we know, it's not just biblical. There were practical things that we learned through the achievements uh, program. But I wouldn't be here tonight uh, if it wasn't for uh, Brigade and the encouragement and the discipleship that they gave to me over those years. <coughs> awesome. Tom, thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how it's part of the DNA, right? of of some of our um upbringing and and some of our discipleship journeys that we've had the chance to receive um anyone else want to share their uh journey dale kincaid figuring out technology and raising his digital hand how about that go for it dale so uh, my achievement uh experience when i was younger the badges meant a lot to me and um, I strove to get the badges, but as I became into my middle teens, uh, that wore out and I kind of stalled out on achievement. But uh, so my captain called me aside and and asked what the problem was. And I basically explained that, that, you know, it's it's not a big deal to, to get the uh, the badges. And um, I don't know the exact words, but he basically said, it's not about the stinking badges. We don't need no stinking badges. It's about the growth process. And um, that if I would strive beyond the mediocrity that I had settled into, that God would utilize that process to grow me into more of the man that uh, God desired me to be. And so I stepped it up and I did finish uh, the Herald of Christ through that process, and I'm glad that I did. And uh, he told me that if I didn't, I'd probably regret that. So I don't have to look back and and regret that. And it definitely helped shape the man that I uh, that I became. And uh, my captain happens to be on here today. Thank you, Mike. That's amazing. Yeah, connection. Mike was Mike was sharing some of that a little bit earlier, Dale. So thank you for uh, sharing your your background and your story with uh, achievement. Again, the Lord using different people, different uh, 
activities that are in our lives to bring him or to bring us closer ultimately in relationship with the Lord. It's so cool to hear. So exciting. Anybody else want to share a story uh, with regard to achievement? Um, hey, we got another digital hand. Uh, Perry, go ahead. You can unmute yourself and share your story of achievement. Sure. Uh, so I earned my Herod of Christ back in 87. I was the middle of three boys and we were kind of competitive. My older brother tended to set the bar and then I tended to rebel against it. But in this case, uh, we sort of had the goal of each earning our herald of Christ. And God used that in a unique way. We started our brigade program in the town of Berwick, Pennsylvania. And then my family moved to another church in Almedia. They didn't have a brigade program. So my dad started one there. Uh, and then we had a period of time where we didn't have any leaders and any men in the church that would lead the battalion program. My dad was a stock running the stockade program, but no one would lead the brigade program the, and so, or the battalion program. So my older brother, I guess my dad was, I'm not sure how they did it. I guess my dad was sort of the, the person in charge, but my older brother ran the program. We actually ran it out of our basement at our house because we wanted to earn our Herald of Christ and there was no one in the church willing to run the program. So we just ran it ourselves and kept it going so that we could eventually earn our Herald of Christ. And both my brothers and I were able to do that. And just a, another thought in regards to that, our brigade program was on Monday night. It was not uncommon for us to wear our brigade shirts to school. We went to a public school. Uh, and I remember doing speeches in high school we had to do different types of speeches. And I one time went in and took my brigade books in, my shirt, my badges. And I basically gave a speech on what we did, how we earned badges. I don't remember what type of speech it was supposed to be. Uh, but it was not uncommon for us to then invite boys to go to brigade with us from our school. Uh, over the years, I know of at least four boys out of my class that went to brigade programs with me and uh, had an opportunity to have an impact on their life spiritually. So I think the idea of achievement and earning badges for our family because of just the way we were programmed and being competitive, it probably kept us going. If we didn't have that, when when we didn't have anybody to lead the brigade program, it probably would have shut down or, or we would have just quit and given up. Uh, but we had a goal in mind. And so even without an adult leader, we pressed on and, and kept with the program. And Arden was able to award my Herald of Christ back in, in 87. So that's my story. That's awesome, Perry. And you're kind of crossing uh, two different worlds for me with the whole public speaking stuff. I serve as a public, uh, as an adjunct for public speaking classes at a college locally here in Rochester, which is kind of funny and seeing how people get nerved up and what they bring in and, and <laughs> share with everyone. So you're, you're uh, kind of going into two different spheres, at least in my world. So thank you for sharing that. It's good. Uh, anyone else want to share their story of achievement? Ron, I see your physical hand up. So why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself and, and share your story with regard to achievement. It's a bit similar to Perry's in that my older brother was in battalion before I was. And uh, once he got a head start on achievement, so it was my purpose in life to catch up with him, whether in basketball playing or baseball or any sport, but then it became achievement. And uh, I never quite got better than him in sports, but I did finally pass him up in, in doing achievement. And while we both got our heralds, I'm a little over a year younger than he is, but he took two more years after I got mine to get his. <laughs> but what was the primary motivation for me and to my shame, the primary motivation motivation was not badges it wasn't to learn the scriptures it wasn't to be discipled as it should have been my motivation was because our captain would every year sometimes twice a year run an achievement contest between the squads and the winning squad he would take out for a dish of ice cream or a cone of ice cream a local uh, dairy queen and so I wanted the squad that I was leading to win. So that made me as the corporal pass achievement. And some of the guys in my squad took it up too. And so our squad won those contests more often than not. So not only did I have lots of ice cream, but I also began to realize that achievement 
was much more than just badges, much more than just talking to a man about life and the answering the questions and all. I look back on it as a step-by-step -step discipleship ministry in my life that took me from being a kid, both spiritually speaking and physically, mm -hmm. to being a man, to being mature, to being hungry for God's word, to desiring to serve him. So achievement, though when I was doing it, it wasn't doing much for me in one sense, but little did I know the Lord was at work anyway, despite my rather poor motivations, he was in charge using it to nudge me toward being involved in ministry. And I'm very thankful for that. And I'm going to add a little tiny story at the end of this by saying uh, many years ago, I was a stockade leader. And it, this kid, Chris, had come out a couple of times, and he happened to be in my post. And so he learned one of the first verses of achievement was something simple, like, we love him because he first loved us. And he did right. He got that all right, all six or seven words. And then he had to say John 3.16. Well, he struggled with it. And I said, Chris, you've never seen this verse before? He said, no. Our family doesn't even have a Bible. I said, you don't. I can give you one for your family to use and for you to use when you learn verses. But why not, instead of you saying the verse from memory, you read the verse out of the Bible. John 3, 16. And I said, the way I want you to read it is to substitute your own name, any chance you get in the verse. And Chris started out, for God so loved the world that, and I said, think about it. There's a word there that might fit where you could substitute your name. And he looked at it, squinted his eyes, looked up back at me and said, world? And I said, try it. For God so loved, and he stopped. And then he very slowly said, Chris. And he looked up at me, away from the Bible, and he said, really? And I was about to cry, as I am now. And I nodded my head. That's all I could do. And as I did, I didn't see a literal one, but I saw something akin to a light bulb go on right over his head. Just with that one thought that God loved him. Chris, a broken home. Chris, his mother didn't care much for him. Wasn't even sure where he was on, on a Friday night. At nine years of age, he was there saying this Bible verse to me. And it was time for games or something was happening after, after the achievement. And I said, we got to go now. And he said, no, no, I, I want to stay and talk about this more. And I said, really? I said, well, maybe the chief ranger will give us permission to sit and talk more. And we did. And I got to explain the gospel to him. I, I've never had such a beautiful moment in my life with, with, how God used a simple phrase and a simple verse to move a kid in such a way. He did pray that night. I'm not so sure that it was a salvation prayer, but no doubt he was really touched by, by the Lord. And Chris had to move or somewhere left our group and have never seen him since. Hmm. And I trust uh, he may resurface sometime. Whether he says thanks or not isn't important. I'd rather hear him say, I'm serving the Lord. So that's my story. Awesome, Ron. Amazing how the Lord uses achievement and to spark conversation to lead people to the Lord or to lead people back to him. Um, I, I love that. Beyond, beyond the achievement, right? Beyond the patch or the badge so to speak, to 
Uh, anybody else want to share their story related to achievement, related to uh, what we have been talking about tonight? If you want to raise your physical hand or go ahead and slip the digital hand up in the reactions tab, you can do that. Anyone? Go ahead, Bill. I see a physical hand. I also see, see Scott. Scott will cue you up. You're next after Bill. Go ahead, Bill. Okay. Well, my uh, my only achievement in my multiple years in brigade uh, uh, was memorizing one verse. Um, our our battalion 997 in northern New Jersey didn't emphasize achievements a lot, but we did have one week long canoe trip for which there was a requirement. And I have to give a shout out to Bill Wood, George Westerman, who uh, I know Ron knows and several of you know, uh, for their incredible um, mentoring of us young men. I came to brigade not as a Christian. Heard about had been going for about a year. I just tolerated this notion of belief in God, even though I didn't personally, because I know better than to believe in things you can't see. There's no Easter Bunny. There's no, you know, a tooth fairy. And I kind of got the idea there's no God. Um, not through Brigade. I didn't get that idea. That's what I came to Brigade with. And there was one requirement for this trip, and that was to memorize a verse. And uh, it was John 5, 24, we're supposed to memorize. It says, very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. You want to make sure I heard the gospel. So memorizing that verse was was the requirement. So uh, a week before the trip, the captain comes to my house to listen to me say the verse. He says, go ahead and say John 525 and or, uh, 524. I'm sorry if I misquoted that. And so from memory, I spouted out God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. And he looked at me, he said, John 5, 24. I said, yeah, that's it. And he says, no, that's John 4, 24. And I thought, I guess I ain't going on this trip. And uh, he said, well, that's an important verse too. You can go. <laughs> so I went on the trip. Uh, <laughs> long story short is uh, a deacon from our church came along on the trip. And uh, after devotions one night uh, around the campfire, it was a wilderness uh, canoe trip on the border of Maine and Canada, the St. Croix River. And uh, he gave devotions and he said, any of you who've never received Christ as your savior, please come and see me afterwards. So let's close in prayer. So we closed in prayer and uh, we're off, off to our tents for the night. And they, the deacon taps me on the shoulder, Billy, can I talk to you for a minute? And I was like, gulp, I know exactly what's coming here. I know exactly what's coming. It had never happened before, but I know we're going to have this awkward conversation and uh, lucky for me, he said, have you ever received Christ as your savior? And he got right to it. And I'm like, oh, uh, uh, no, no, I, I, I never have gulp. And I think I think what he said is, would you like to? But what I heard was, you'd like to, wouldn't you? you, you, you. And I'm like, man, I am cornered. I can't insult these guys by saying, no, you know, I don't I don't go for invisible people who don't exist. I, the only charitable thing is to say, uh, yeah, that would be uh, that'd be great. Yeah, well, that's great. We can pray right now. And he 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 prayed, and then I stumbled with trying to remember. Okay, what do people say when they pray? And I think all I came out with was, uh, "I love you" and "Amen." Next morning at breakfast, they said, "We got some good news, Billy. Good news from last night, Billy. You want to tell him?" And I'm like, "Uh, uh, uh. Well, the good news is Billy became a Christian last night. Oh, yay! Clap, 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 clap." So I figured now I have to go to church. No big deal. I'll just go to church. There'll be none the wiser because that's the only difference between someone who's not a Christian, someone who is, is Christians go to church. So I'll I'll go along with the pro. And the idea wasn't to deceive. It was to go along. So I started going to church next Sunday. Long story short, so that other people can contribute. And this is not the uh, Bill Griswold monologue. Is I showed up one Sunday. I asked her. I thought I would ask a few stump the band questions because the Sunday school teacher asked me if I had any questions. And I asked some stump the band questions like how come God makes creates light in verse three, but doesn't create the sun. You know, I did a few of those. And to my amazement, I, I thought he was going to react like the Wizard of Oz says, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, you know, when he's caught with his pants down. And he didn't. He just said, I don't know. Here's what I think. But, you know, I, I don't know for sure. But I think that God just created. Anyway, he answered the questions, long story short. And I got home that and I was like, wow, I was amazed. I never thought that Christianity was a rational thing. I just thought that the higher ups would scramble when you caught them with clever questions. And so I finally thought, you know what, instead of um, instead of testing for God's existence by saying, God, I'm going to let go with this pencil. If it hovers in the air, I'm on board. You know, you've convinced me uh, instead of me asking God to jump through my hoops. Maybe I should jump through his. And long story short, uh, that night I said, God, I believe in you. 
There's no, you don't have 30 days to prove yourself. I just believe in you and uh, I'll do whatever I think you want. And it was two days later, I thought, oh, let me dot my eyes, cross my T's. Uh, I, please forgive my sins. I want Christ to be my savior in my heart, in my life, uh, however, to just to, to officially sign the paper. But I became converted on that first night. Anyway, so the role of achievements, while minimal in our council, was was used by a wise uh, battalion captain to uh, to get my nose in scripture and to to let me to let me slide even though I memorized the wrong verse and uh, and the Lord used that trip to trap me into becoming a Christian Christian which the Lord used in the next week to really have me become a Christian. Awesome, love hearing about God using His Word again to draw people to himself even if it's the wrong verse uh, <laughs> what's required all right hey scott our president is going to wrap up our reminisce time uh scott if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself and share your story of achievement sure many of you who know my story know that um it always hasn't been with christian service brigade um those of you that do know me and know me well i do along the lines of the term bleed green i'm all in but i grew up in royal rangers my dad was my leader and we were in an assemblies of god church starting out in trenton michigan and then in the buffalo new york area and uh their herald of christ is called the gold medal of achievement and i'm not exactly sure why you know in the stockade age it was called pioneers at the time why i just loved and thrived to uh, you know earn the next um the award and all, all along and then it then it got to the next level and I really enjoyed setting goals for myself and many um accuse my dad of oh sure you know that was your son of course he's going to earn the highest well he was actually harder on me I don't know how many of you had your dads as your leader um many many times that they they were harder on on you uh and I I reflect back on my time um ron i think ice cream is a great motivation <laughs> to to earn achievement and i i didn't have anything like that i would have loved to have ice cream to get to the next levels but i i there there was some internal drive uh that helped me set goals and achievement which helped me uh to, to through to today and uh, i attended a fairly large church in orchard park new york and they did my gold medal of achievement ceremony in front of the entire church. Um, many of you are hailed to Christ. I hope that you had a, a really awesome ceremony as well. And so during this, um, there, there were several dignitaries from the New York State District there. Of course, my, my dad was there. And there was a woman that I didn't know that was just started attending the church. And she was there at that service. And after the service concluded, she turned over to her daughter and said, you are going to marry that man, that young man someday. Three years later, we got married. <laughs> and I don't recommend getting into achievement and getting to the highest award for girls. But for me, <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I was able to, you know, and I think through that process to, uh, as our mission statement says, building a godly man of today and tomorrow, when you go through things like achievement and you strive for to be like your mentors, you're establishing yourself as the man God wants you to be, no matter if it is as a future husband, a future father, a coworker, a deacon in the, uh, you know, at your church, uh, a pastor, various different things. I think achievement helps you, helps set you up for any kind of man that God wants you to be. And he reveals that through the whole process. Amen. That is right on. And Scott, thank you for uh, wrapping up our reminisce time. Um, we are going to uh, move forward with highlighting um, a couple of things. First off, we have, uh, I believe there's a couple new folks on the call today. Peter, are, are, you, are you new by chance? No, actually, I've listened in a couple of times. So okay. This is, a, this is um, my fourth or fifth time. Okay, well, 
Anyway, welcome back. Um, but joining us on the line tonight is Mike Sams. Uh, he has, uh, this is his first uh, alumni call, uh, I believe, and we want to welcome him and and uh, highlight his uh, connection to uh, to Dale Kincaid and to the Ohio area. So, um, Mike, I'm going to just uh, send it over to you and you can take it away. First of all, you got to unmute yourself, which is something that you'd have to do. Um, I can ask to unmute you and maybe that will come up for you. How about there now? We there we go. Welcome to the conversation. Go ahead. Take it away. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for having me and Roger for suggesting that I come and talk with you guys. Um, this would be my 60th year in Christian Service Brigade had I continuously gone, but I've not really been involved for about four or five years. Um, I used to go to Battalion 1180 in Warren, Ohio, Northmar Church, and I was the, uh, well, I'll just start off by saying that I was invited to Christian Service Brigade by our neighborhood bully. For any of you remember the old stockade trails, there was an achievement in there where you had to bring a boy for three weeks and then you would pass an achievement. I had to come three weeks or he was going to beat me up. So uh, I came all three weeks. I used to be a very small guy. I went into high school at about four foot ten. So I was small and he had no problem beating me up. But uh, he did not do that. And I just never left. I grew up without a father. Uh, never met my father. Um Instantly went to battalion or stockade and had two fathers adopt me. These two guys just, they saw that there was something there and I'm sure I increased their prayer life tremendously, but they honestly uh, made sure I went on every outing. Um, I didn't have boots to go on an outing one time. They bought me boots. I didn't have my own sleeping bag. They got me a sleeping bag, whatever I needed. They had, I never missed an outing and I never miss, missed a, a week of summer camp. In fact, lots of times they paid for two weeks of summer camp at Stony Glen. And it was just uh, tremendous. When I moved up into battalion, um, I, I had two more men basically uh, adopt me as their own and just made sure that I started to become the man I needed to be. Understanding I'd never surrendered my heart yet three years in stockade and never yielded to the Lord because I was a tough guy. And when I, in February of, uh, when I was 12 years old, I went into the hospital with spinal meningitis and I had uh, eight other boys in the room with me. All eight of them died. I was the only one that lived. And I remember laying there and they told my mother, I wouldn't make it through the night. But I said, Lord, if I die, I'm going to hell. I need to have you in my heart. And I said, and if you get me out of this, I will work with boys and, and people the rest of my life for you. And it was just a tremendous thing. Uh, within a month, I was out of the hospital. Uh, had a lot of side effects for a number of years, but all went well. At the age of 17, our battalion captain moved to New York up into, some of you guys know where uh, the Geneseo Valley is. And uh, actually lived in, he lived in Geneseo for a while. Now he lives, uh, just outside of Letchworth State Park, and I forget the name of the town. But um, uh, so I became the battalion captain at the age of 17. I was uh, only had one thing left to do to get my Herald of Christ, and that was to turn in my, my essay, and then I would have got, done that. And Jay and I talked about this earlier, and I didn't mention anything earlier because I wanted to include it now. But uh, at that point, Charlie Stewart left, and Stan Hoyt became the area representative. and. Stan just really wasn't that big on the Herald of Christ and thing like that. So we never really got my essay turned in. So I never did get my Herald of Christ, but that has been such a motivator over the years to let other boys know, don't look back and say, I didn't do this. And that was one of the things Dale and I talked about when he was doing his Herald of Christ. And uh, Dale certainly has made that uh, a wonderful, wonderful part of his life. Anyhow, um, over the years, uh, we have had, had a great battalion at Northmore. I was their captain for 46 years. Um, during that time, uh, I met a girl when I was 14. 
we started dating when I was 15. And after we dated for just uh, about a month, I, I went over to her house one night and I said, I hate to tell you this, but I can't date you anymore. I really like you, but you're not a Christian. And I promised God I would only date Christians. And that night she asked Jesus Christ into her heart and she has just been tremendous. Uh, in about two weeks, we'll be celebrating our 49th anniversary. I let her father make the last payment on college before I married her. And then uh, I was, I just, I, I look back at my life and going to Stony Glen camp all these years. And a few years ago, Dale asked me to come and help with the JC training again. I did that for a number of years, as well as doing outdoor challenge and a lot of camping things at, at Stony Glen. And I'm loving it. Uh, Dale has me, I think I told a few of you earlier that he asked me on a new assignment and I'm about four pages in Dale with cliff notes. Um, and I just really am looking at it and saying, what a great opportunity. I'll be 70 in a few months. And uh, just how cool it is to just be able to work with these young men again and do that. I spend a lot of time working with recovery people now. Uh, even though it's a funny thing, I've never had a drink or never had a cigarette, never used profanity, and they find me kind of an odd thing. Uh, but the men that raised me in battalion, the men that took me on, taught me Christians don't do these things. And I took them very literally at that, and I'm just so blessed that I don't have those things to look back at. But at the same time, the guys I work with now in recovery, uh, it, it gives them something to realize that they can be different than the way they are. So I just, I don't know how much time that's been. I could talk to you guys for four more hours if you want, or do you want me to stop there, Jay? No, you, you can you can share another minute. Uh, I think it's neat that you're still involved um, talk just real quick about the cycle of how it's gone full circle for you. Like what we talked about this afternoon. Sure. Um, it's, it's so cool. Like I've got guys like Dale, I, I, that are now just, uh, you know, working in Christian service brigade and uh, something that I have always loved and have always prayed for. And especially the last two years, I couldn't tell you guys how much time I spent in prayer with you, but like a gentleman who was helping me with my phone earlier, cause I am greatly tech technologically challenged um and, and i'm going to tell you that is self in, imposed because so many of my friends were getting in trouble getting on the computer and and getting involved in things they shouldn't have gotten into strong christian men that i told myself i could do without the computer rather than get away from the lord so i chose to be illiterate <laughs> but, but uh Richard uh, was one of my sergeants. Um, I've been very blessed to have great sergeants over the years. And Dale was a sergeant. And Rich comes and stays with us about one month out, or one week out of every month or every two months. And he visits his mom in the nursing home. And then he he's here and we get to share time. And at the holidays, his family comes and stays with us. And uh, it, it's just a, a real blessing. And I've had many boys over the years uh, from camp and from battalion that they just stop by at the holidays and they hang out. And uh, I hate to say this, but I think most of them kind of talk with my, my wife because she's that kind, gentle soul and I'm still trying to fix all their problems. But uh, she does a great job of just being a, just, she has always been a supporter of camp. She hands out more camp brochures every year than I can even come close to. Uh, and, and she's, always looking for a boy that needs battalion, always looking for a boy that uh, needs Christian service brigade. So. Awesome. Mike, thank you so much for sharing uh, your spotlight and your story with us. Um, again, full circle, seeing Dale involved. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Roger Campbell to uh, wrap up our, our night tonight uh, with some announcements uh, and some details involving next month. Roger, take it away. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, Mike, I really appreciate you uh, taking time to join in tonight. And uh, I would encourage everybody that I obviously know people who are alumni, invite them to be part of alum the Alumni Association. You know, the Alumni Association got started last year and it was uh, out of necessity in some sense, the desire 
to start pulling brigaders together to strengthen and encourage the brigade program. And that's been a big help this past year. So, uh, you know, that I encourage you guys to spread the word and get other people involved. And, and there are alumni that are standing up and starting to help do things in, in units as unit advocates and starting units and, and things like that. Um, so that's very important. Um, and uh, at any rate, uh, our next meeting is going to be April 27th. And that's going to be a Thursday instead of uh, a Tuesday. And it's going to be at 8 p.m. Uh, right here on the same channel. <laughs> and uh, so we'll look for the announcement of that. And the theme for the April Council Ring is going to be the overview of the history of the frontiersman by our resident historian, Ron Rind. So he's going to take questions and answers, and, and that'll be interesting to see. And um, so that's pretty much it for the evening. Um, it's always good to hear people's stories. Um, and um, Ed, I, I've, I've told people your story about Stoney Glenn when the guy stole your clothes there at the A-frame. I think that's a, that's a great story. Uh, not unexpected for a bunch of silly guys to do stupid things, but uh, anyway. Well, it wasn't a story. <laughs> <laughs> it it yeah. traumatized my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and all of us have stories. Uh, I recall at summer camp many years ago, helping serve lunch, and we had tomato soup. And as it turned out, as I was serving the soup to the window, I turned around and take a spoonful of soup myself and uh and i did like tabasco sauce and still do and i had dumped a fair amount in my soup and was eating unbeknownst to me my friend dale uh was dumping more of it in there uh, and before i finished and he was getting frustrated because i was not indicating that anything was wrong because i didn't really notice until I got down about the last bite, and apparently it was all Tabasco sauce. And I said, oh, my gosh, I put more of that in there than I thought. He said, finally, finally. I said, what do you mean, finally? And he shows me the bottle, you know, and it's almost empty. And it started out almost full. So anyhow, one of my favorite memories at summer camp at Stony Glen, working on the service crew. Unfortunately, it was my last year to do service crew. I didn't want to get poisoned again. So uh, at any rate, um, but it's good to hear people's stories. I'm glad you're all here. And I certainly encourage you to invite others. And uh, and that's about it. Um, I, I don't know, um, Joel, do you want to pray us out? And then those of you that want to hang around and talk after the meeting uh, can do so. so. Sure, Roger. Thanks, everyone, for attending. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful uh, that uh, you have used Christian Service Brigade to impact all of our lives, whether it was uh, as children and teen, uh, for some coming to know Christ, for all of us coming to know you more fully and deeply, and in our uh, in, uh, moving from mediocrity to passionate pursuit of Christ. And we do know that for some, uh, their experience with brigade began when they were a leader and, and how it's really impacted their lives as well. So we do thank you that uh, you continue to use this ministry. And we just pray that many more men will step up and, and be used by you to invest in the next generation. In Christ's name, amen.